Grab your Bibles. We better get some teaching here. Praise the Lord. So, God is good. Look up Acts 10.38. Acts 10.38. And um, I'm going to run through some things here real quick. If you want to order your uh, confession card shower curtain, then they are not available. In case anyone hasn't told you, it's April the 1st. Acts 10.38 said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. This is such a powerful scripture. And I'm going to look at a few things here. The first thing I want to look at, first of all, is that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he went about doing good and healed all. He healed everyone. And here's a few things I want to point out. If you're taking notes, maybe you're using one of those cure journals. If you're taking notes, the first thing I've got here is you've got to understand God has the power to heal. God is able to heal. Let's just settle that right now. God is able to heal. And we have people come to us and say, well, Ashley, you don't, Carla, you don't understand. I have this disease or that disease. The doctor says it's generic. The doctor says, you know, it's a genetic. The doctor said it's this, it's that. There's no chance. I'm here to tell you, God has the power to heal whatever is wrong with you. 100% all the time. God is able to heal. He's able. He's able to heal. Whatever it is, he's able to heal. Maybe you, you've got an issue because of your own stupidity. I remember one time I had this off-road buggy and I actually found a loophole in the DMV in England and I made it road legal. True story. And I put license plates on it and I had to put some like indicators and a few little things to make it road legal. And then I drove it around. It was this big off-road buggy. It was like a sand rail type thing. I remember one time Carly borrowed it. She said to me, is that safe? I said, honey, it's like driving a Volvo. It's very safe. It wasn't. It was like a death trap. I mean, you could just about, you had to hold on for dear life just to keep it in a straight line. I hadn't got around to fitting the, the seat belts, nothing. Well, she borrowed it one time. I was like, where's mum? Oh, she went out in the buggy. I was like, no. So anyway, she came back and said, never do that again. Well, anyway, I was driving it once and I actually like power sliding it. You know, it was back wheel drive. So I was doing a, just showing off a little bit, I have to say, my own stupidity. There were some people watching. So I, I proceeded to do a power slide, beautiful power slide, until I hit a little divot in the road and that buggy rolled. I mean, it rolled. It threw me out. My friend was actually watching. He thought I was dead. It threw me out. The buggy rolled on top of me. And I, I used to be a BMX biker. Any BMXs here? Skateboarders? A few people. And they're too, they're, too afraid to, they're too ashamed to admit it. I used to be a BMX biker. I broke six bones in my body, right? I broke, I broke my leg, I broke my elbow, I broke my hand, I broke my collarbone. I broke a bunch of bones BMX biking when I was a kid. So I know what a broken bone feels like. When this buggy rolled on top of me, my arm was broken. I mean, I could feel it broken. And as I laid there on the floor, I was thinking to myself, I've got a choice to make right now. And I was thinking about all the things I had coming up, I had a vacation coming up. This is in a split second. And right there, I made the choice to jump up because the devil was saying, this is your own stupidity. It's different if you have a disease, but this is your own stupidity. You, you, you're reaping what you sowed. This is your fault. God's not going to heal you. That's what went through my mind in that few split seconds as the world was turning around. I was like, this is my own fault. I was showing off. I was in my 20s. I was, I was showing off. I was like, this is my fault. But you know what I did? As soon as I hit the ground, my friend said it's like I didn't even, as I hit the ground, I bounced back up again. I just started running around. And at first, I couldn't lift my arm, but I started running around shouting like a madman. I don't know what people thought. And I was going, I'm healed, I'm healed. And I ran around for about five minutes or so. And by the end of it, I was lifting my arm up. Now, it hurt a lot, but I lifted my arm up. By that night, the pain was gone. I had a, I had a, uh, a graze on my arm, but the pain was gone. No, no broken bone. I believe that was when I felt it. There's been times in our lives when I used to play soccer. I had a soccer injury. Again, the devil says, it's your fault. And, you know, I was like, it's your fault. Whatever it is that's caused you to have an issue, whether it's your fault, whether it's someone else's fault, whosoever's it is issue that caused you, <laughs> they're laughing on the front row because they heard my big toe snap, literally. They were watching me play soccer and my big toe snapped. It went bang. This big guy, like 300 pounds, stamped on me. So, I, so I, I went back on and scored in my left foot. The only time I've ever scored a goal with my left foot and then came off and I was uh, in pain. I cried like a baby. But anyway, so it doesn't matter whose fault it is, whether it's a disease that you've uh, you know, acquired, whether it's something that someone's spoken over you, whether it's something that you've done because of your own stupidity, whatever it is, whatever type of disease it is, however serious it is, listen to this, however small it is. Sometimes we think, well, God's not able to heal that. It's such a small thing. I'll just get over it. I'll just, you know, it's just this or it's just that. It's not a big deal. I don't wanna trouble the Lord. You hear people say that, I don't wanna trouble him. He's busy. He's got like seven billion people to look after. I don't want to trouble him with this little thing. I'll just look after it myself or I'll just take a tablet or whatever. No, however big the thing is or however small it is, God is able to heal you. Jesus paid the price for every single disease. I love what Pastor B.J. was saying about the name above all names. 
I'm here to tell you, Jesus paid the price for every single illness, disease, pain, whatever it is to be healed. He is well able. Jesus is well able. God is well able. Matthew 9, 28. Matthew 9, 28, it says, uh, and when he had come into the house, his house, the blind men came to him, came to Jesus, and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? Jesus asked these blind men, said, Are you, do you believe I'm able to do this? I believe Jesus is saying the same question to us today. Do you believe I'm able to heal you? Do you believe I'm able to heal you today? I mean, it's, you need to say yes. You need to say yes to the Lord. Say yes, Lord, I believe you're able. Jesus is able. God is able to heal you. He's paid the price to heal you. In fact, you could do, go to this extreme and say he's already done it. He's already paid the price for your healing. It's a done deal. He has paid the price for you to be healed. So he is 100% able for you to be healed. He can heal you 100%. It is no problem, praise God. All, everything, all your diseases. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, I'm my soul, and forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. He forgives all your sins, past, present, and future. That's the good news. I don't know about you, I need that good news. He forgives all your sins. Ready for this? And he heals all your diseases. Not some of them, all of them. He heals all your diseases. He is able. God is well able. Here's one of the problems we have is that we think God is able. Me and Carly, when our daughter was sick, we believed God was able. In fact, we was in a church that believed in healing. They said, you pray for people because God can heal people. But they said, if God decides not to heal that person, it's not your responsibility. They say things cute like this. And I'm not against them, I'm just saying. They say things cute like this. Well, if you pray for them and they got healed, would you take the credit? No, you give the credit to the Lord. So if you pray for them and they don't get healed, give the blame to God. So we believe, this was in you know, 16, 17 years ago, we believed that God was able to heal, but we didn't know whether it was God's will to heal or not. So we would pray very spiritual prayers. I know some of you are here from all different circles. So you may pray like this. This is how I used to pray. Lord, if it be your will. Now we can pray, Lord, if it be your will when it comes to should I move into this town or that town? You know, or should I marry this person or that person? Or whatever. We can pray if it be your will. But when it comes to healing, we don't have to pray if it be your will. We know the will of God. God's putting his will right here in our word. He's told us 100% that it's his will for us to be well. It's a done deal. God's will is for you to be healed. So the second thing I've got here is God, the Lord is willing. The Lord is able Today, wherever you are, online, here in person, the Lord is able. And the second thing is the Lord is willing. The Lord is willing to heal you. It's his will for you to be well. And some people say, well, Ashley, you, you know, we've heard that a lot. We already know that. Well, repetition is the, is the mode of learning, right? Sometimes we need to hear this over and over. I needed to hear this a lot before I really took it in. See, me and Carly were there. We saw our daughter. She was dying. They told us she had a, a maximum of a week to live. And then we heard from a cassette tape Andrew Womack, and for the first time in my life in 2006, I heard someone say, is God's will to heal every time? And I was like, I'm not sure about this. And I looked through my scriptures and I looked up all the verses and I was like, you know what? Religion, the, the church we was going to, religion taught me otherwise, but the truth was it's God's will to heal every time. So powerful. It's God's will to heal every time. I like this in uh, Matthew 8. In Matthew 8, verse, uh, let's, let's read this uh, verse one here. It says, he came down the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and behold, a leper came and worshipped him. This is a little side note, but it says, you know, he spent, Jesus spent the, the night praying to, with the Lord, and then when he came down the mountain, great multitudes followed him. A lot of people are looking for influence or looking for um, people to, to minister to or people to disciple or influence or whatever. Jesus never looked for people to minister to or disciple to. He looked to his father. He spent time with his father, and then the people came to him. The Lord sent people to him to minister to. So a little side note there. I think we need to get back to making sure we're spending time with the Lord first, and we serve God first, and then we serve people so anyway, um, he came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. That was for free. I just added that in there. Verse two, and behold, a leper came to him. This is uh, Matthew 8, verse two. Behold, a leper came to him and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. See, this leper thought, I know God is able, point one, but is he willing, point two. He had a question, is he willing? I know he's able, but is he willing? He said to the Lord, if you are able, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Verse three, Jesus put out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing, be cleansed. Jesus said, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed, it was gone. See, it's a terrible thing if we believe God is able to heal, but he chooses not to. Think about it. It would be better to believe God isn't able than to believe that God is able, but he's not willing. That would be like a parent able to heal their child or able to give their child something to make them better, but withholding it. 
That would be a terrible thing. So we often, Carly talked about this last night a little bit, we often think that God is able but he's not choosing to. That's a terrible place to be. I'm here to tell you God is willing. God is willing for you to be healed. It's his will for you to be healed. I like it what um, Jesus said to Philip. Philip said, you know, show us the Father, Lord. Show us the Father, Jesus. You know, we want to see the Father. We want to see the Father. You can find this in, in John 14. Philip, uh, Jesus turned around to Philip and said, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen Jesus, you'd seen the Father. Meaning this, if you read the Gospels, if you go through the life of Jesus, you are seeing a representation of God the Father in the flesh. Jesus was the expressed image of God, right, in the flesh. So when Jesus walked on the earth, what he did was showing the Father's will. In fact, what Pastor Lawson spoke on, I love that, about the seven redemptive names of God. Jesus fulfilled the seven redemptive names of God while he was on earth. He walked around fulfilling God's character on earth. He was 100% man, but he was also 100% God. He was showing people the true nature of God in the flesh. If God was to take a selfie, it would look like Jesus. I know it's cheesy, but that's, how, that's what Jesus is, the perfect representation of God the Father. Therefore, Jesus said to Philip, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And guess what? Jesus was not just in a good mood for those three years, and now he's quit healing. Jesus is the same. Hebrews says Jesus is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. God doesn't change. I'm the Lord your God, I change not. Meaning this, when we see Jesus in the Gospels healing people, he was either going to heal someone on his way back from healing someone or healing someone. Sometimes he's on his way to healing someone and got interrupted by someone else who needed getting healed. He had a healing ministry and he did not refuse healing. Every person that came to Jesus for healing ultimately was healed every single time. You can't find an instant where God said, Jesus said, you know, I, I don't wanna heal you. It's not my will for you to be healed. In fact, the, the woman, what Pastor Lawson was teaching on, the woman with the issue of blood in, in Luke 5, she touched him. Jesus didn't even have a decision to make. Think about this. He didn't have to say, well, are you worthy enough? Have you done enough? Have you got the prayer chain praying enough? You know, have you done this? Have you done that? Have you, you know, he didn't even make the decision. She just touched him and virtue went out of him and she was healed, showing us this. It's always God's will to heal every single time. That's, that's, until we get that truth down on the inside of it, it's gonna be hard because we always gonna have this doubt. Is it God's will to heal or not? Is it God's will to heal or not? We're gonna have this question. I'm here to tell you, put that, put that question to bed. It's God's will for you to be well. God wants you well. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper be in health, even as your soul prospers. God wants you well. God wants you healed. His name, even your natural body heals itself. It wants to heal itself. God wants you well. And he will, he will, he will work with where you're at. Just like Pastor Lawson was saying, this, the, the centurion, you know, he came and said, don't even come to my house, Jesus. You can just say the word, I'll be healed. Some of us have the faith to just say, I just believe the word and I'll be healed. Some of us need to go and have hands laid on us. Call for the elders, have lands, uh, hands laid on you and be healed. Some people need to renew their minds. Some people need to do some certain things. It's not because God's choosing how to heal you, it's because how you can receive it. We believe it's God's will for every single person to be healed every time instantaneously. Why? Because that's what we see happening in the Gospels. That's what happened with Jesus, that's what happened in Acts, and we believe that today. Whether we see it or not is a different matter, but we can never get away from the fact it's God's will to heal every time. And I know that that can mess with some religious thinking. I'm telling you, it's God's will to heal every time. They say, what about, what about people who aren't healed? Well, it's God's will for everyone to be saved. I could read you six scriptures out of the New Testament that shows you it's God's will for every person to be saved. But is every person saved? No, because they have a choice to make. It's their decision. So not everyone is healed doesn't mean it's not God's will to be healed every time. It's because there's other factors. There's still the enemy roaming around. We still have natural thinking. We're still in a fallen world. But it's God's will for you to be healed. So God is able and God is willing. And the last thing I'm gonna say here before I turn it over is that the Lord is actually the healing. He is your healer. He is the healing. You come to conferences like this, this is great. The reason we call it the cure is because Jesus is the cure, amen? The gospel is the cure. The cross is the cure. Jesus is the cure. The Lord is healing. He doesn't just have healing. He's not like he just has this you know, facet, you know, I can heal, and then he puts it over here and then walks over here. No, it's actually who he is. The Lord is healing. The Lord is your healer. That's who he is. Just like he's your provider, just like he's your righteousness, he is your healer. The Lord is healing. And we can't get away from the fact that if you sh we should not really be seeking healing. We should be seeking the Lord. The Lord is our healer. We see a lot of people at these conferences that are coming and they're desperate for healing and they want it separate from the healer. That's like a, a, a marriage where, you know, or, or someone who just wants the intimacy, with, like they want the, the benefits of the marriage, they don't want the actual intimacy, they don't want to actually commit, they don't want to actually seek that person. People that want just healing but don't really want to go deep with the Lord and actually get, understand the Lord and actually understand his ways, submit to him. Resist the devil 
Devil, the sickness comes from the devil, very simple. Sickness comes from the devil. Healing comes from God. Resist the devil, submit to God. A lot of us are trying to resist the devil without submitting to God. The Lord is our healer and he's only got good things for you. So we have to understand that, that he's our healer and he's the one we need to submit to and he's the one we need to go to. Exodus 15, 26, I'm the Lord who heals you. Jehovah Rapha, I love that. That's one of the seven redemptive names of God. He is a healer and he wants to heal you, praise God. Not only that, Jesus was a model for us to follow after. You know this, right? Jesus modeled what we should do. Everything Jesus did on earth up until the point of going to the cross, we can model that. Jesus was showing us this is what a regular human being can do once they've given their life to the Lord and baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can do these things. Jesus did not play any deity tricks. Meaning this, every person Jesus healed, people say, well, Jesus healed everyone because he was God. And Jesus never sinned because he was God. No, while he was on earth, he chose to restrict himself as a man. Meaning this, everything Jesus did, he did by faith. He did by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus never healed anyone until he was healed with the Holy Spirit. He never performed any miracles until he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So me and you today, once we've given our lives to Jesus and received the Holy Spirit, can do what Jesus did. In fact, Jesus said, you can do greater works. So therefore, we have the healer living on the inside of us. Therefore, we can see healing all around us. We have the power of God in the inside of us. And we don't have to come. This is like a bad marketing ploy, I guess. We don't have to come to a conference like this. Come back tonight, it's gonna to be awesome. <laughs> Andrew Romick's preaching, it's gonna be awesome. Come back tomorrow morning, it's gonna be awesome. I'm just saying, you don't have to come to a conference like this. You don't have to listen to your favorite Bible school. Now, they're all good things, Bible teacher. You don't have to go to Bible school. You don't have to go to church. It's all good, go to church. Do these things. But ultimately, you have the heat on the inside of you. You have the power of God on the inside of you, and you're the ones that can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. The body of Christ has been sold a lie that you know the ministers here, the quote unquote full-time ministers are the ones that do the ministry and everyone else just sits down and eats popcorn and watches. That's not how it's meant to be. God set up the body of Christ that every single one, see it's believers, not, not just full-time ministers lay hands on the sick, believers lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. That's why last night we saw probably 40 or 50 people healed in front of our very eyes. And Carly didn't lay hands on any of those. This was... You lay your hands on each other because the power of God is in you. The role of the fivefold ministers, if you like, is to equip you. This is Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. It says, for the equipping of the saints. Why? Who are the saints? You, everyone who's given their life to the Lord is now a saint, spiritually speaking. So you're automatically a saint, whether you feel like it or not. Too bad. If, you, if, you, if you've received the life of Jesus, you're a saint. To equip the saints. And why are the, why are the ministers meant to equip the saints? We're meant to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So we're meant to equip you to do the work of the ministry. Whether you're a full-time, whatever you do full-time as an occupation, I like it when people say, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer or a mechanic or just a stay-home mum. I like it, just a stay-home mum. If you just, you know, if you're a slacker and you just stay home and look after the kids. I'm like, don't say that. That's the hardest job. I, I was a stay-home dad for a little season. Hardest job in the world. I, mean, I just go to work for a break. So anyway, whatever your daytime occupation is, Whatever your daytime occupation is, the fact is you are called to minister. You're called to the ministry of reconciliation to tell people about Jesus and to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. You're called to, to operate in the spiritual gifts, not just in church, but in your, you know, in, your, in your household, with your family, in your school, in your workplace, in the store, wherever you are, you're called to do that. And that's, you've got the healer on the inside of you. You can lay hands on the sick and see them recover, praise God. So I'm here to tell you, church, God's is able to heal you. Whatever you have today, whatever you come with, whatever your friend has or your family member has, whatever you have online that's ailing you, God is able. He is well able. He's paid the price. God is willing. He's already made up his mind about you. He wants you well. God wants you well more than you want to be well. God wants your friend or your family member well more than they want to be well, more than you want them well. God wants you well. It's his will for you to be healed every single time. Don't let the enemy mess with that. And lastly, God is healing. The closer you get to God, the closer you get to healing. And not only that, the Lord lives on the inside of us. First um, John 4, 17, as he is, as Jesus is, so are we when we get to heaven. Yeah, but also in this world. So are we in this world. Meaning this, you are like Jesus walking around on the earth. You're not Jesus, but you have Jesus, the power of Jesus living on the inside of you. Therefore, you can do what Jesus did. You can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. And it doesn't have to be a long religious prayer. Have you noticed Jesus prayed pretty short? I'm not one of these long prayers. It's a type of like a bit of a pet peeve of mine. Let's pray for like an hour. It's okay if you want to pray for an hour. I pray in my own time, but group prayers, especially when you have to hold hands. 
Let's hold hands. Let's hold hands and pray for an hour together. But then your nose itches and you've got someone's hand here and someone's hand there and you can't itch your nose, trying to get it with your shoulder. And then if you lift up their hand to scratch your nose, that's gross. <laughs> and if they do it to you, that's even worse. So praise God for COVID. No, no, no. Okay, so, so, so I don't want to do a group prayer for an hour. Jesus just prayed for people. He said, be healed. Stretch out your hand. See. I mean, he prayed quick prayers because he knew who he was and he knew God's will and he knew God was able. I mean, to tell you, church, God is able, God is willing, and you have the power of God on the inside of you to see yourself healed or anyone around you healed, praise God. You have healing on the inside of you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that we have the power of healing on the inside of us. Lord, I thank you that the healer lives on the inside of us. I thank you, Lord, that we have healing on the inside of us. And right now, Lord, I thank you for anyone believing for healing. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. I speak healing over everyone. Online right now, be healed. Whatever hours you be healed right now in Jesus' name. We curse any disease that comes against your body, any disease coming against your mind in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. You prayed, paid the price for our healing. And we pray right now, Lord, for every single person here to be well. By the end of this weekend, Lord, that every single person is gonna be well because you are able, Lord, you are willing, and you live on the inside of us. We have healing on the inside of us, Lord, and we thank you for that. We thank you that believers lay hands on the sick and they recover. We thank you for many miracles. Phenomenal miracles happen in everyday situations. I thank you for miracles in households, miracles in, in places of education, miracles in the marketplace, miracles outside of these walls and inside these walls. I thank you that we're gonna take your Holy Spirit out in the streets and see people's lives transformed by the power of God. I thank you, Lord, your will is for us to be healed in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.